So here's lesson two, two. Let's start out with um, the top problems. We're going to do every single one because it just kind of will make sense, I think, if we just do it together. Um, the questions 18 through 21 is asking, state whether the equation is linear, yes or no. And um, if we look, remember, we kind of have two forms of linear equations, uh, ax plus by equals c, it's a standard form, or y equals mx plus b. You'll notice that the x and y are separated. You'll notice that the x and y do, doesn't have any powers on it. Um, they're just basically standard x's and y's. So if we look, you can see 18 is clearly in standard form. The x and the y are both simple, basic x's and y's. The problem with 19 is this piece right here. We can't divide by an x or a y, so that would be a no. 20, the problem with 20 is this piece right here. The x's and y's can't multiply together, so that's a no. And 21 is a trick. Uh, it is a linear equation because we could write it as g of x equals 0x plus 10. It actually is one of these. It is a uh, slope-intercept function. So that one is, is a trick one, kind of. Uh, it is a horizontal line. If you were to put into Desmos y equals 10, you would see a horizontal line at 10. So that one technically is a linear equation. Now let's talk about 22 through 27. 22 through 27 you want to get them into this form you see I've written right at the top of the screen, ax plus by equals c. So you want to get it to be like that. So we want the x to come first, then the y equals a number. Now in standard form, they all have to have integer coefficients. The greatest common factor has to be 1. Okay. So I don't think you're going to have any tw trouble with 22, 23, 24, um, even probably 25. What I would like to do is 26 and 27. So if we could talk about those. Um, let's start out and let's do 26 together. Oop. Sorry, it's grabbing the whole thing here. Stop doing that. Okay, 26. So on 26, you will notice, remember, standard form is ax plus by equals c. The problem is, is the fact we have fractions. We want those front numbers to be integers. So the common denominator of every fraction we see in this problem is 2. So just multiply all the tops by 2. So we would get 2 over 2, which is 1, 2 over 2, which is 1, and then 12. So that changes it pretty quickly. Now, I would like to do one. Uh, let's look at 25. Now, the problem with 25 um, will all kind of appear in just a second. What I'm going to do first is the rearranging. So we're going to have negative 10x plus 5y equals negative 25. Now besides having a greatest common factor of 1, it is customary to have our x term to always be positive. So the first thing I want to do is multiply by negative 1. So we get 10x minus 5y equals 25. Now another thing they mentioned was you can't have uh, a greatest common factor other than 1. Now, what does that mean in, in regular terms? Well, that means that if there is an integer that will divide out of all the terms, divide it out. So simplify it. Can you guys tell me what is a number that will divide into every single one of those terms? And you can tell me verbally, or you can just write it in the chat bar for me. Five. Five. You got it. Five. So. So because we can t divide by 5, 
That's what they mean by reduce it down as much as possible with the greatest common factor. So the answer for 25 is 2x minus y equals 5. So what do we have? We have the x, then the y equals the number. Um, the greatest common factor of 2, 1, and 5 is just 1. And we got our front x being positive. So there you go for those ones, okay? Uh, now let's talk about x and y intercepts. Um, and I want to, uh, let's do 32. Mm -hmm. We're going to do 32. <laughs> I got a bird picture. That is a bluebird that lives in my backyard. I don't know exactly why my bluebird picture came in. Isn't he cute? Anyway, that's that was my dad's bluebird. He was a much better dad than the mom was. She, she didn't care about my bluebird babies so much. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so um, they asked us to find intercepts. So um, I would write this as y equals 4x minus 1. Remember that g of x or f of x or h of x. That's just a fancy way to write y. Uh, remember your x-intercept. We're going to let y equal 0. Our y-intercept we're going to let x equal 0. So uh, our x-intercept, we're going to let the y equal 0. And we're going to solve for x. So add 1 to both sides. Divide by 4. So our x-intercept is 1 fourth. Now let's do the y-intercept. We're going to make x equal to 0. So we get y equals 4 times 0, take away 1 or y equals negative 1. Any questions about the x or y intercepts? Okay, let's go back up. Uh, now we're going to talk about graphing. Okay, um, You may graph these however you want. You can use the slope and the y-intercept. You can plug in any two x value points you want. You plug in 1 and negative 1, 0 and 1. I don't know, pick two points. Um, there's so many ways to do them. I would like to pick, uh, let's start out, let's pick these two. Let's pick 38 and 39 to do together. And then what I'm going to do is we'll do a um, one of the fractional ones as well. Okay, so let's start out with 38. Since 38 is in standard form, I think a good uh, way to, to do that is through the intercepts. So I make, I call it my 0, 0 chart, my intercept chart. If I let x equals 0, I get 5y equals 10, so y is equal to 2. If I let y equals 0, I get 2x equals 10, or x equals 5. So you found, find the intercepts, and you also are able to graph it really quickly. So let me um, set up my graph paper here. I'm so glad they make straight lines for me. So I hit the y-axis at 2. I hit the x-axis at 5. And then you just connect it. And try to make it kind of stretch out for me across your graph paper, okay? And you should put little arrows on the end to indicate it's going to keep going. Does anybody have any questions about number 38? Okay, so let's look at 39. This is y equals mx plus b form, not standard form like 38. So in this case, I would use the fact that our m is 0.5, which is 1 half, and that our b is negative 3. Now let's draw the line that way. So we're going to start at negative 3 at our y-intercept. So that's that b hanging off the end. Now our slope is 1 half, so we're going to go up 
one and to the right two from that point. So go up one to the right two, up one to the right two, and you can do that as many times as you want. You can also, once you see the pattern, you can even go backwards. And then put your arrows in. Okay? Does anybody have any questions about 38 or 39? Okay, now I would like to do one that has fractions in it. So let's do, let's see, what's a good one? Uh, let's do 47. Now, if I were, you know, if somebody said, hey, Mrs. Hot, graph this for me. The first thing I would do is I would um, get rid of the fractions. So I would mu let's multiply through by the common denominator of the fractions we see in the problem. Can any of you tell me what is the common denominator? And you can tell me verbally or you can put it in the chat box. What would the common denominator of those fractions be? Delilah, what's that? Yeah, 12. That's correct. And so what we're going to do is let's multiply by 12, okay? Now, when we multiply the fractions by 12, the tops get multiplied by 12. When we multiply the 2 by 12, it's just 2 times 12. So when we multiply on this top here, it's 12x divided by 4, and then 12y divided by 3, and then 12 times 2. Now, you don't have to show that step. You know, you can do in your head 12x divided by 4, that's going to be 3x, and 12y divided by 3 is going to be 4y equals 24. Now, I think it's standard form. So I think my little 0, 0 or intercept chart is a good, good rule of thumb. So if I let x equal 0, the x term is going to go away because that's going to be 0 and I'm going to be left with negative 4y equals 24, so divide off the 4 and get negative 6. For the uh, y, or the x-intercept, I'm going to let now the y equal 0, so this term's going to go away, and we're going to be left with 3x equals 24, so x is equal to 8. So let's draw our graph. So what we know is, is that uh, we hit the um, y-axis at negative 6. We hit the x-axis at positive 8. Connecting. That was not perfect. And then put your arrows on there. Okay? Does anybody have a question about 47? Now, from your algebra class, Algebra 1, back in the day, um, you know, your algebra teacher might have taught you multiple ways to graph. You pick the way that you feel most successful. I'm just trying to show you the ways I think work kind of the easiest for lines. Okay, let me just go back up and look at the assignment. Um, I think that is a good guide to get you started. Um, your homework for 2-2, you have until Saturday midnight to get this turned in. Um, if you're going through the assignment and you have any questions or you get stuck on anything, please send me a remind text or an email, and I would be more than happy to help you, okay? Um, does anybody have any questions before we stop?
So we are done for today. It's a good idea to, as soon as we're done, to um, go and start working on your homework while it's fresh in your mind.